Hi, I'm Brian Hale. Welcome to Miskasaw Bend Conservation Area. This is this week's Wildflower Walkabout. Miskasaw Bend is about 190 acres altogether with several different types of habitat. Behind me is the first one that we'll see today. It's just a grassland. It's primarily just Eurasian grasses. But we've left it this way because it's the home to some nesting birds that, uh, that use the grassland. Even though it is Eurasian grasses, they still prefer it to, they still need grasslands to, to nest. So we keep it open. This is a nice patch of Virginia bluebells, just in full bloom right now. I see there is a little bit of color variation. There's uh, most of them are blue. They're often pink when they first open. And sometimes there are some that are white and some kind of fade to a lighter blue as they get older. These are our white trout lily, Erythronium albidum, also called a naturalist fawn lily. And this is a early spring wildflower that uh, uh, will be completely gone in a, in a few weeks. It comes up with these mottled leaves. Many of them will come up with a single leaf for years, and then it'll have two leaves, and then it'll create a flower. Dutchman's breeches is another wonderful spring wildflower. It's another very ephemeral one. Uh, by the first of June, this one will be dried up and gone. The spring ephemerals take advantage of the sun that they're getting right now before all the leaves and the trees come out. Once the canopy closes, there's a lot of plants that uh, are done for the year. These are mayapple. Mayapples grow in a, a clone where they spread out from a single one and can cover a very large area. Most of the plants come up with a single leaf. They won't flower. The ones that have two leaves, like this one, will flower, and there's a flower bud. That'll have a nice white flower in another week or two, and then a couple of weeks after that, a small apple. They are edible, but they're really bitter, and if you eat too many, you won't feel so good. This yellow flower is swamp buttercup. You can tell it's a buttercup because the leaves look so shiny, like they're wet. This is one of two buttercups that we'll see today. This one is Ranunculus septentrionalis. The name comes from uh, a Latin word that used to be on the map that covered uh, the Northwest Territory and basically meant the unknown land. This is also a good time to point out that Hiskasaf Band, like a lot of places, doesn't have a lot of trails. And when you're walking off trail, here or lots of places, be sure to check yourself for ticks afterwards. I've only ever found uh, dog ticks here, but uh, I tend to find them pretty regularly, usually on my shirt or on my pants after I've uh, gotten back to my car. Okay, we're standing on a, on a little hill here, a knob covered in uh, fir oak trees and white oak trees and uh, a few other savanna species, and down below us here is the seep. Now that, that's caused by water that comes here on the hill, soaks down through, and goes out into the seep, comes out of here into the seep. Beyond us here is the Piscasaw Creek, so this is going down to the creek. But the wetland is really interesting here. It's a it's not really, a, it's sort of a fen, the, the uh, pH is a little bit high, but it's, uh, uh, it's all organic matter. I've uh, stuck a, a steel rod in and various places I can go down six or eight feet through very soft soil. There's a lot of skunk cabbage out here, marsh marigold. There's a rare plant called uh, swamp saxifrage and Jacob's Ladder. And we really can't get out to those today because it's so wet out here because of all the rain that we've had. 
but we'll, we should get to see some of those plants later anyway. This is Carex pensylvanica pensage, which is one of my favorite spring wildflowers. It's a, it's a sedge, and there are about 100 species of sedge in northern Illinois, but, but they look like grass, so they really aren't uh, noticed very much. And they're often very hard to tell apart and to identify what they are, but this one's pretty easy. This is a great angelica. It will grow several, it could be 10 or feet, 10 feet tall, uh, with a globular, globe-shaped white flower on the top of it. It's a typically a wetland plant. And it's growing here right near the wetland, so we'll see how it does this year. Hey, we have a nice uh, collection here of uh, marsh marigold and skunk cabbage, and there's some great angelica there. Marsh marigolds are beautiful spring flowers that uh, like to grow where their feet are wet, where they can be wet all the time. Skunk cabbage also likes to be growing where their feet are wet, but not in water. The skunk cabbage forms, a, their roots form a, a mat that's just thick and huge. This, this, it's called skunk cabbage because of the smell. Now the flower does have a little smell. It's a, it, the flower comes up first. It looks like a little Purple, purple tent in the real early spring. And it has a little bit of smell, but really the smell comes from the leaves. If you crumple up a leaf and smell it, it smells really bad. A lot of these are really just coming out yet. These huge leaves are, are really neat. And we saw Great Angelica a little while ago. It's a spring, uh, or it's a, a tall wildflower that... Uh, grows in wet areas, likes to also be near the water, and can grow six to eight, maybe ten feet tall. Behind me is a wetland mitigation area. Now what this is, it is land that's being restored to a wetland. Now when a unit of government or a company has to destroy a wetland for a conservation or for a construction project, they have to replace that wetland that they've destroyed with other wetlands somewhere else. And that's what this is. So different organizations have given the conservation district money to restore this area as a wetland and they have changed the water table to uh, to make sure that it, it stays a wetland. About five years ago this uh, field was a, uh, a soybean field and uh, through a lot of work they're working on restoring this to uh, to a native prairie. They've planted a lot of different plants right in front of us is a lupin uh, but there's a lot of things. Now it's short right now because they were able to burn it this spring. It's always really fun to come out here in the summer and uh, see all of the prairie plants coming up after a burn. This is another buttercup. Earlier we saw swamp buttercup. This is early buttercup. Uh, Ranunculus fascicularis, I believe is the name of it. You'll notice the leaves are a lot different and the petals are not as wide as the swamp buttercup. But they're still shiny and look wet, which is a characteristic of all the buttercups. These are buds of a hickory. You right, see right back here, there's the trunk of the, uh, the shagbark hickory. See how big they are? Once they open, they, they almost look like a flower by themselves. These are shooting stars. Now they're not blooming yet, but they will be in another few days. They have beautiful flowers that uh, hang down and there's a lot of them here. There's thousands of plants like this here. The name of it is uh, Primula media. For years it was known as Dodecatheon media, but they just changed the name a couple of years ago. This is Jacob's Ladder. 
Polymonium repcans. If you see the leaves, how they're opposite like that, they're very distinctive, and that's what gave it the name Jacob's Ladder. The little blue flowers are just now starting to come out. These are the only ones I see in bloom, although there's a lot of plants here. Very beautiful plant. It also naturalizes very well in your yard. I planted a couple of them a few years ago, and I now have quite a few. These are yellow trout lily, like the white trout lilies that we saw earlier. But these aren't really native here. They're native further east and south of here. Uh, why they're growing here? Well, I believe they were planted here around a house. The house has been gone for at least 60 years, and ever since, this land has been used for cattle grazing. So I think the cattle must not have uh, liked it, but the trout lilies sure have. They've really spread out over the past 60 years. This is wood anemone. It's another nice uh, early spring. It's a savanna or woodland flower. The leaves are like uh, five parts, so it's its uh, official name is now Anemonoides quinquefolia. These are spring beauties, Claytonia virginica. These are some of the hardiest wildflowers. Uh, they're a nice early spring flower. They have a, uh, a bulb. It's a little bulb that's under, underground, of course. It's about the size of a chickpea. And I'm told they're edible. I've never tried one. But you'd have to collect an awful lot of them to have much of a meal. Well, thanks for coming to Piscasaw Fen Natural Area. Uh, I'm Brian Hale. This has been uh, our walk today. I hope you enjoyed it. You got to come out here uh, because this changes all the time. Every week, now it'll be a little bit different. More things will be flowering.